Toshambi Gordnazarov um, is an assistant professor at the UCA School of Arts and Scientists and has a joint appointment in the Cultural Heritage and Humanities Unit as a research fellow. He will be speaking today on Mubaraki Wakani, a Sufi Ismaili musician from Badakhshan. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Justin, for the introduction. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer of this webinar for accepting my paper. And I'm very delighted and honored to be here today and to speak online uh, 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 about the Mubarak Wahani, a Sufi Ismaili musician from Badakhshan. Now, uh, before uh, talking about uh, uh, proceeding with my, uh, with my presentation, with my paper, I would like to mention that uh, this, uh, this is a paper which is uh, uh, now in the initial uh, stage of uh, you know, my, my research. And I'm I'm working still on it, and there might be some other things that uh, uh, that you you might have been expecting from this paper, but then I might not be able to address them. I I like apologize in advance about that. Uh, so uh, before uh, going to 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 talk about uh, Mubarak Wahani as a musician, I would like to draw your attention to the picture, which is on the first slide is not Mubarak Wahani because we don't have any photo of Mubarak Wahani. And it is his relative Atitan. Uh, he is holding the instrument that was invented by Mubarak Wahani. So uh, uh, the uh, uh, Mubarak Wahani, uh, as you know uh, from, uh, 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 was one of the leading uh, uh, religious scholar and poet, astronomer, uh, he was a paper maker, he was a, a, a great uh, a poet and also a musician in the region. So I, I, I'm not going to talk about all his, uh, his, uh, his work that he has, been, uh, he has done and created throughout his lifetime. And the, here is uh, for, for some of the attendees who are not uh, uh, familiar with this book, this is a great book about the, uh, the, the life for, of for Mubarak Wahani and his work and his all uh, uh, literature and poetry that he has, uh, he has uh, 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 left for us. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's written by Dr. Ilaliyev, who presented his, uh, his paper on the shrine culture in Wakhan as well. Now, uh, uh, before we go to, uh, to talk about uh, 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 his, uh, his uh, experience as a musician in the region, I would like to, to, to say a few words about uh, Mubarak's uh, by, uh, like, uh, life living in, in, in Wahan. His ancestors belong to, uh, uh, is believed to come from Khorasan. Uh, his name was Iqbal Khan and he, uh, he perhaps, uh, we don't really know about the exact, uh, you know, uh, travel to, to Wahan because uh, of the, the, the literature that, uh, that is available to us. It might have been during the persecution time of the Safavi time that he left uh, Khorasan and he resided in Wakhan here in Kalai Panja. And later the, the Mir of that time, the kingdom of the Wakhan accepted him. And then he, he, he was a very knowledgeable person and he, he was appointed in his, uh, uh, in his uh, kind of you know, domain there. And then he was, uh, 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 because of his work, the, the Mir uh, uh, kind of give as a gift for him a place to stay. And then he chose this region in a village called Yam. This is where Mubarak Wahani was born. And uh, I mean, we don't have an exact date of his birth, but approximately around 1833, 1839. And then he lived uh, the entire life in this small village uh, called Yam. Now the Bahan, uh, the Bali, uh, we need to know that what they have contributed to this uh, uh, musical or a kind of you know experience of this great person in the region. Uh, the Wahan Valley itself is located between the two magnificent high mountains in Pamir, to the north and the Indicus to the south. The valley is divided by the river Panj, the main source of Hamudaria, into Tajik and Afghan Wahan. Historically, this region served as a corridor for the trade routes that were part of Trans-Eurasian network collectively known as the Silk Road. So the Wuhan Corridor provided a short passage or safe passage for Chinese and Central Asian merchants between China and Badakhshan. 
The region is therefore becoming notable for its diverse cultural heritage and is home to many pre-Islamic fortresses and monuments, as well as Islamic shrines uh, and places of worship that Dr. Ilalives talked about in his presentation at the first session, which has been transformed also into museum and today serve as a cultural site that preserve their sacred significance. Now, traces of this pre-Islamic culture is also notable in the, 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 the cult or religious practices that people are doing, such as ancestor of worship or male parasty, worship of the sun and the moon. Now, like all these uh, uh, religious uh, 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 diversity in the region, we also have the presence of uh, musical or uh, traces in the region, which dates back to pre-Islamic time. So now here I, I draw your attention to this uh, petroglyph, uh, which is uh, uh, belong to, which is uh, located uh, actually uh, 40 or 45 kilometers away from the birthplace of, uh, of uh, Mubarak Wahani to the east. And this archaeological evidence suggests that in the pre-Islamic area, music existed alongside, and a good example are uh, this petroglyph that uh, located in Langar village in Wakhan Valley uh, of the region. Now, this uh, petroglyph area is, is a very huge site of petroglyphs. It, it consists of uh, uh, more than 6,000 petroglyphs that, uh, that are, belong to the Epipaleolithic uh, time. And some of these pictures are uh, archaeologists by Russian archaeologists have shown that there are pictures of the instruments, uh, uh, musical instrument, and that is uh, way, where people believe that it is the rubal, uh, the instrument uh, that is uh, very uh, prominent and very uh, revered and cherished in the Pamir because of its uh, religious significance. Now, if we look at the image, we, we don't exactly know whether this is a musical instrument or an image of a person who's praying, sitting on his knees. But archaeologist Ranov in 1984, when he did his uh, uh, field work there, he uh, considered that they, it, uh, this belongs to the Middle Ages of, uh, of that region, that it's a musical, and he considered them a musical instrument. Now, uh, uh, taking this into, into account that that is one aspect of this cultural context to where, uh, in which Mubarak Wahani has lived, and then another uh, cultural uh, context that kind of contributed perhaps to his musical uh, life and musical experience is probably the Islamic uh, uh, or religious music or the development of the Islamic religious music and chants in Central Asia. So which are, for example, we, we uh, in, in, uh, in Badakhshan that is connected to Nasir Khosrau, uh, which Professor Beben already mentioned about uh, the, uh, Nasir Khosrau's uh, uh, legacy in, in the Pamir. Now, according to the legend uh, that uh, in one of the, uh, or the uh, geography that exists in the region and people uh, know about that, uh, that the first Rubab was created by Nasir Khosrau in the region uh, during the time of Malik Jahan Shah, that because of his wondrous deeds that he, no, nobody believed him. And then he kind of performed these wondrous deeds, then turned the os into stone and made uh, like this musical instrument from the, from the saddle of the os and asked him to sing the praise of Ali. So that is one uh, kind of, you know, uh, the religious uh, 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 kind of, uh, 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 presence or, uh, in, in the region that kind of contributed later on to, to, to uh, Mubarak Wahani's legacy as a musician. Now, uh, I just have an, uh, have an uh, kind of uh, an argument that for, for perhaps uh, these musical culture or musical practices were even before Islam in the region. And perhaps uh, uh, Nasir Khosrau has kind of used or employed uh, the, the musicians in this uh, domain uh, of, to, to propagate the, 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 the Ismaili doctrine in the region. So now this flow of cultural exchange, exchange has significant effect on the musical instruments, its shapes, meanings, and sound, and then contributed to the development of musical culture in the region. So now one of the most important and, uh, uh, aspects of these musical culture in the region is the performance of Qasida Khani 
or sometimes it's called also Madia Khani or Madda in the region. Now, uh, we, as we know, Qasida as a genre of poetry, it's originated in Arabic, uh, uh, in Arabia, and then traveled uh, to, to Persia, and then it, it developed to different forms of genre of poetry. Qasida became now only one poem, one, but it was like about uh, different genres, like Bahoria, Khamriya, you know, the, 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 the uh, and Tardia hunting poem, you know, wine poem and different other poems. And Madia, one of the, the, the these uh, uh, form of these genres actually became kind of, you know, a musical performance in the region, which is today performed in various uh, religious occasions uh, 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 by the people of Badakhshan and Awakhan. So in Wakhan, these, uh, these, uh, uh, these musical uh, performance or so this musical tradition is called Qasida Khani or Qasaid Khani, which Mubarak Wakhani himself wrote many of uh, Qasidas and uh, many of uh, you know, poems that, uh, that are devoted to the you know, praise of you know, the prophet, the praise of you know, Imam of the time and uh, many others. Now, one thing that we need to know uh, to highlight here that uh, regarding his musical experience, like we don't know where did he learn the music and who was the teacher and how did that, you know, happen. Probably these uh, we don't have any other, you know, information regarding that. But the only information that could attest to his musical, uh, you know, ability uh, that he mentions in one of his poems that arsaze ki nai man nawazat ki wujud in fazl khuda vagarna bar ma chi had ast natwan ba khodi mubarak in saz o nawa mizrabi atas ga qabul o churad ast any music that my read plays from its existence it is the grace of god save our limitations mubarak cannot play this music by himself the platform of the is granted whether you want it or not so now this, uh, this uh, poem that attests that Mubarak Wahani had this God-gifted talent of you know, music that he created and he performed. And then uh, according to many, uh, uh, to, to the sources that I have, uh, secondary sources that are available, Mubarak Wahani also performed in many other, these Qasaid Khani gathering that was uh, you know, uh, performed during uh, that time. The, one of the important aspects of this musical legacy is, is musical, uh, musical instrument that he invented, he created. It, it's called Balan Makam. And then the, the, that this instrument has 19 strings. And these 19 strings are kind of represented because of his religious background and his Sufi ideology and Ismaili ideology. This represents the 19, 19 words of Arabic words called Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So now that we know that in, in uh, musical instrument, uh, in Sufi musical concert has sacred connotation and they have metaphorical meaning. And then people believe that uh, 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 Mubarak Wahani kind of blended these three musical instruments into one. So here we have the rabab, and then the, on the right side, you have the tambur, which is another for musical instrument in the region. And then we have here the Afghani rubab, or sometimes they call it also Badakhshani rubab. So they've uh, blended these, uh, these uh, musical instruments together and then created this, uh, this musical instrument and called it Balan Maqam. Now, why he called it Balan Maqam? It is because uh, uh, some people, they be because it has very, high level of you know uh, sound and sometimes uh, but it, he, he's one of the uh, uh, his relative that performs his own qasidas with the, his, with, with the instrument he says that because this instrument was so in a high stage maqam is arabic word that means high stage or high position it was so high for him that he named it as as it is i'll just play a very little of it <laughs> بشنو هم وی حالی می خالق یو کرده گاره جان آن های رو دو قد هارای حرف کنف و 
You know, this Qasida was uh, fragmented of Qasida from his, uh, from Mubarak Wakhani's uh, poem, uh, uh, Risala, which he healed in your treatise of the 40 worlds, uh, and it is believed to be devoted to the first Imam Ali. So, and, and then the allegorical side of this, uh, because we have, as I said, that there's so uh, many allegorical meaning to the instrument. The neck of the instrument is like the 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 the, top, the, the head of the hoopie, and hoopie is uh, really a, a bird which we also know from the conference of the bird of Athar Nishapuri, which he led the, all those uh, birds to towards the Simur, and then he created the, or he even made this uh, instrument also as uh, like the neck of the instrument as the uh, uh, head of the hoopie that uh, also is significant for his. Uh, uh, Sufi and you know mystical uh, uh, journey. So uh, uh, and then uh, these are the uh, other allegorical uh, uh, the things that might have uh, kind of contributed to his creation. That, for example, the 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 rabab uh, of uh, uh, Pamiri rabab also has the form of burak, the uh, mythical horse that has you know one form of human and the other form of the horse. That took the the the, the Prophet Muhammad to, on the Shabi Miraj of the nine uh, ascending to the uh, to to the heaven. So that is one of those uh, cultural kind of background that is contributed to his imagination and to his creation of this Balan Maqam. And then he the, his legacy left a very important uh, aspect that today his uh, his uh, uh, disciples are creating different forms of his musical instrument. This is also one of the uh, great, great son of uh, Mubarak Iwakhani, and he is holding a, 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 an instrument that was uh, created by the, 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 the father of these, these men on the, on the picture. His name is Ahmad, and he's in the human form. And that is also related us to this idea of that when first human was created, the soul didn't want to enter, and then the music was played, and they believed that the robot was made and played, then the soul went inside the, 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 the body. And also in, in Badakhshan, when they perform during funeral ceremony, they also play musical instrument because music helps to elevate the soul and then go. And another musical or uh, kind of, you know, craftsman that uh, inspired by these Balan Makon with the shape of this instrument that his name is Abdul Mahmad and he creates this Balan Makon but without uh, the nine, uh, 19 strings, but only the seven, seven strings. Now, to, uh, and we have a new form of these uh, uh, very, very recent one by Shaukh Muhammad Puladov that created, blended this tambour and rubab together, which also forms a, a kind of inspiration that he got from, from Mubarak Wakhani and his relatives and his other, you know, disciples that, this tradition of musical experience that it helps uh, their religious uh, um, and mystical life uh, to, to elevate their, their, their soul and to be connected with, with the divine uh, that today uh, Mubarak Wahani has kind of left and contributed towards the cultural practice and religious practice in the region. Now today uh, the Mubarak Wahani has uh, uh, a, a new, new museum has been dedicated to his name that consists of, you know, uh, uh, as the uh, home to all his, his creation, all his invention that he has done. And it, it serves not only uh, for the local people, but in general for the entire nation uh, in Tajikistan and then for, you know, as a tourist attraction for the, for the world. Thank you.